my name is Raquel Reinigle, a current master's degree student at the University of Hawaii at Manoa in the Department of Second Language Studies. This video series will be covering some alternative and not so alternative approaches to language teaching. This particular video will be covering content-based learning and content and language integrated learning. So let's jump right on in with an overview of this approach by our guest lecturers, Mac and Elham. So CBI is an approach to language instruction that organizes uh, instruction around meaningful content and subject matter. As you see, so there is kind of integration between language and content, but in CBI, is content is kind of, it's more content driven. So content is more important than language. The focus is on more content. Rational for using CBI, meaningful and comprehensible and put in context. So. Uh, learners are kind of exposed to meaningful learning and um, to comprehensible input. So this is one of those theoretical underpinnings for using CBI in the class. Also support for CBI comes from sociocultural theory of uh, zone of proximal development. And so according to this theory, uh, learners are kind of uh, engaged in very complex activities and very complex tasks. Uh, but they always get the support of their teachers or their more proficient peers. So after a while, they can perform on their own. They Overally, they get some um, academic achievement in there. Characteristics of effective uh, CBI. In CBI, is kind of contextualized uh, learning. So the focus is on learning about something that is meaningful and relevant uh, to the learners. And also, focus on language development, so there are um, language related goals too, so it's not only about content, it's about language too. So language is both the medium and the goal of instruction. Um, and language objectives can be drawn from vocabulary skills, genres, or registers of the subject matter. Uh, use of relevant and appropriate authentic and adapted texts and tasks. So in CBI, the teachers try to provide the learners with some appropriate authentic and adapted materials. Um, they use lots of bridging activities too because it's going to be very complex content and language together. They use visual activities, demonstration, charts, uh, graphs and, and things like that are uh, very much used in CBI classes to kind of increase the resources and decrease the complexity. Participation in learning tasks that promote learning of content. So different kind of tasks are used in CBI like cooperative tasks, information gap, project based activities and all of uh, these engaging tasks are used in CBI classes. Um, the last one that is uh, development of learning strategies and academic skills, that is CBI provides the natural context for uh, developing and learning the strategies and academic skills. So different strategies are used like note taking, paraphrasing, summarizing, predicting, confirming, disconfirming. These are some of the strategies that are used. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about CBI program models, and so the first one is mostly content driven, and that is with sheltered instruction, and then after that is theme based instruction, which focuses on language also, but with the theme it can also combine many different types of subjects together, and so like they combined like environmental science and math, and they did a bunch of things together with university students. And so that's what makes that a theme-based instruction. An adjunct model is more of like a combination, I think. Like, so there'll be a language class that kind of piggybacks on a content class that they take separately. And the reason why they do that is because they feel like it gives opportunities for lower level students to have uh, speaking parts with more advanced proficient speakers. And then there's also a skills-based model. So Quill, it is kind of synonymous with CBI, but we can say in different contexts there are some differences. Um, so the conceptualization of uh, Quill, it's kind of an umbrella term. So lots of um, language content in integrated programs goes under Quill. And some scholars argue that it's a kind of methodology, some say it's a pedagogical tool, some say it's an innovative methodological approach. 
So uh, there are different arguments over there uh, of, about the conceptualization of CLO, uh, but the definition is that CLO is a dual focused educational approach in which an addition language is used for learning and teaching of both content and language. And the scope of CLO is not clear cut. So, uh, these are some of the differences in instructional goals, student participants, the nature of the target language, and then the balance between language and content, and pedagogical approaches to integrating language and content. And here are some differences and similarities between CBI and CLO. So CBI is the term that in people use mostly in North America, and CLO is used in Europe. Uh, in terms of syllabus, uh, CBI courses are primarily content-driven. In CLIL, syllabus uh, will depend on the approach to CLIL. So the course is based on whether it's designed for young learners, secondary school, or tertiary level learners. CBI and CLIL learning activities are not intrinsically different, but many differ in practice because of the age of the learners and their uh, other needs. CBI learners are expected to acquire language with content through the noticing and awareness raising activities. For this reason, the learner is expected to process language consciously um, and as well as intuitively. And both CBI and CLU require active participation on the part of the learners with a goal to, toward learner autonomy. And then in CBI, teachers have to familiarize <laughs> themselves with different and unfamiliar content and often have to develop their own courses and choose and adapt materials that provide a basis for CBI. That's because CBI is more content driven. And in CLO, the key focus is to make sure that the students have understood uh, the material presented. In both CBI and CLO, the materials play a central role, maybe especially design materials, materials used to teach content subjects, and a variety of different forms of authentic materials. Okay, so there are also some challenges of using content-based instructions, and the three that I saw that were most common is one was finding ways to combine rigor and accessibility. So how do you make content um, not too easy that students can't get anything out of it, but at the same time that you're actually make, meeting the certain goals that you have to meet. And so it's a challenge, how do you scaffold effectively to make sure students get from the level they're at to the level that they're supposed to be at. And this is in a CBI focus, so remember in CBI, LM talked about the focus is not on learning the language. Teachers are stressed, they have to get you to understand the specific content knowledge in order to do well on a test, right? high stakes test, and so that's the reason for that. And then also there's not a lot of collaboration time between language teachers and content teachers. So those are the three challenges I saw. Here are some of the clue challenges. So the rules and responsibility of language and content teachers are always a challenge because sometimes language teachers feel like they are not qualified enough for teaching content, and sometimes content teachers feel unqualified to teach, um, like to speak the language. And then professional development is that there's always a need for professional development programs to be offered at universities so that they can help with to find a balance between the roles of the teachers. And then curriculum and materials um, are also one of those challenging parts. Finding appropriate materials, designing them. There's always a need for institutional support. It cannot be done by teachers themselves. They need a lot of institutional support for providing appropriate materials and for recognizing assessments. A big thanks to Mac and Elham. Now let's move over to student perspectives. The problems, I mean, you're double dipping. So you're getting both content and language. So the kids are learning both whatever subject it is and then they get to be exposed to the targeted language and then they're not going back to their first language. One of the issues with the CLIL is that like, regardless of um, whether it's a language teacher or a history teacher, for example, there's going to be moments where that one person might not know, perfectly know either aspect of what they're teaching. So there's always going to be that element of maybe imposter syndrome for that teacher. And I think the students might be able to feel that too. For me, I think using the simple language and also um, 
yeah, trying to make things less complex is going to be very helpful. So, um, yeah, using those strategies that is going to that's, that facilitates uh, the instruction. So that's it for this lecture. By far, this is not all the information on this approach, and if you're interested, you should do some more research. But I hope this information will start you off on the right foot to second language teaching. Good luck, and goodbye.